Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How are you? Now let's start this part. Chapter 1, Part 3, How to Prepare the Abstract. From this picture, we can see an abstract art. It means the picture you have to imagination, how to imagine what it looks like. However, an abstract in a paper should be revealed as miniature version of the paper. The abstract should provide a brief summary of each of the main sections of the paper, such as introduction, materials, methods, results, and discussion. All these sections should be included in the abstract. Usually, for the abstract, shouldn't exceed the length specified by the journal. Commonly, cannot exceed 250 words, and it should be designed to define clearly what is dealt with in the paper. The abstract should be uh, should include the first should state the principal objectives and the scope of the investigation. Second, should describe the methods employed. Third, should summarize the results. And uh, last, should state the principal conclusions. The importance of the conclusions is indicated by the fact that they are often given three times. How to you guys have to know how to pay attention about the conclusion. The conclusion has to be given three times, once in the abstract, another in the introduction, again, in more details, probably, in the discussion. So, the principal conclusion are important component for a paper. For most of all, all of the abstract should be written in the past tense, because it refers to work done. For the work has already been done, so the most of the abstracts should be written in the past tense. Also, the abstract should never give any information or conclusion that is not stated in the paper. The means that means the abstract how to be related with the paper. And also that literature must not to be cited in the abstract. You cannot, uh, usually cannot have any reference in the abstract, except in the rare instance, such as modification of a previously published methods. In a rare instance, normally, the abstract should not include or refer to tables or fingers. Most of the time, abstract was composed of, composed of text. text. There usually have two types of abstracts. One is the informative abstract. It is designed to condense the paper. For the informative abstracts, the preceding rules apply to the abstracts that are used in primary journals or often without change in the secondary services, like uh, some of the chemical abstracts, electro. This kind of abstract have no change. It's okay. It can and should briefly state the problem for the image, uh, informative text. Should briefly state the problem, the methods used to study the problem, and the principal data and the conclusions. That means it is similar as the whole papers. The structure of the informative ab abstract is similar to the whole papers. Often, the abstract Surveys the need for reading the full paper. Without such abstracts, scientists would not be uh, will not be able to keep up in active area of research. This this kind of abstract is useful to let other to attract other readers' attention to continue to read the paper. Informative abstract abstract is the type of abstract that can precede the body of the paper, such as uh, serving as a heading in most of journals. There also have another kind of type of abstracts in, 
make you abstract. This kind of abstract sometimes also called a descriptive abstract. Usually it's designed to indicate the subjects dealt with in a paper, much like a table of contents, making it easy for potential readers to decide whether to read the paper. This kind of indicative abstract, the uh, content is not uh, totally similar to the, uh, the, the structure of the paper. However, because of the described rather than substantial nature, it can seldom serve as a substitute for the full paper. Some information in the papers you cannot find from this kind of indicative abstract. So, indicative abstracts should not be so used as hiding abstracts in research paper, but they may be used in other types of publications, such as review papers, conference reports, or government reports. So, in most of such papers, can, uh, this kind of indicative abstract cannot be used. Such indicative abstracts are often of great value to reference libraries. For, for the abstracts, we have to know 